What is the World Cup? What is the World Cup? What is the World Cup? Well, ask people around the world and they will tell you about it. Ask people in the United States, World Cup? Don't know anything about it. Come June, three and a half billion, not million, three and a half billion people will watch the World Cup on television. No, not too many in the United States, but around the world. Buddy, what is the World Cup? What makes it the most watched television program in history? Well, of course, soccer is the most popular sport in the world. And every single nation in this world competes over two years to qualify to come this time to America to compete in the World Cup. So even if your country hasn't made it that far, you're interested in it because your, your nation was competing in it. And you're interested in it because that's the one chance in four years that you get to see the, the nations, the greatest nations in soccer compete together. It is, it is a festival uh, of the magnitude of the Olympics, if not greater and is, uh, is, as you said, the most watched program in, in the world. Soccer has not caught on in the United States. That's Certain true. parts of the United States, they have kids that are playing it, but for one reason or another, it has not picked up an audience in television. They tried to do it professionally. They couldn't draw many people to it. And in the thing that disturbs me, they're bringing it in, and it's going to be just 100 miles from here at the Meadowlands Complex, they're going to have eight games. And we're going to have one of the teams, I believe, Saudi Arabia is going to be here in one of our colleges to practice. But yet, we've heard nothing at all about it. There's been no promotion for it. And I know when a country hosts this, it means untold millions of dollars from people who come here to see it. I, I think we're looking at billions of dollars, really, down the line. There's manufacturing. There's uh, air travel, hotels. These people are bringing in lots of money. It's a shame. It really is because it takes a little bit of time to, to understand the game. But I think. Well, once how long did it take you? You came from the United States. You were used to football and basketball and That's baseball. Right. Now you go over to Sweden and then you're in the United Kingdom now. How long did it take you to become a fan of the game of soccer? Well, I think I always had an interest in sports. And it took me really a couple years. I would, I would watch a few minutes of a soccer game at a time. And then slowly I was watching more and more and more as I understood more. And I started to understand that the scoring of a goal isn't the only event in a game. What else is? Well, there's tell a lot what, of... Tell me what I should watch for. There, there are tactics. There is skill, agility. There is um, the individual performance on one hand and the teamwork on the other hand. And there's also the situation. What is the situation of the game? Are they close to each other? Do they, you know, does one need points against the other to go up in the standings? See, in, in uh, European soccer, the worst teams leave the league. They go to Division Two. The top teams in Division Two, they enter into Division One. So there's a constant change. You're interested in what the worst team is doing and the best teams, and it makes it very interesting. And if, you're, if your hometown has a, a uh, minor league team, you're hoping that they play better and better so that one day they can get up to the Premier League. So there's an interest there. Well, I, I know it is around the world, but here in the United States, it just has not triggered response. And whoever's involved in the promotion of it has just not done the job of letting people around the country know that this is going to be here and the big deal that it is. There are going to be thousands and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, who will be coming to see these games in the different venues that have been selected. Uh, in Los Angeles, where the finals are going to be played, the three great tenors of the world, Pavarotti and Carreras and Domingo, will be getting together again for a special concert. I mean, this shows you how big it is when you can bring them in for a special performance well, of this. They'll do anything for a free ticket to the World Cup. <laughs> Introduce soccer into this country. And I think it's going to take maybe another 20 years before we look again at whether soccer can work in this country. It's a shame because I, it's a beautiful sport. You really It's a game you play where you don't need anything. You need a pair of sneaks and a ball and a field. So you don't have to spend money for equipment. You don't need uniforms, per se. You can wear different shirts, and that's the extent of it. But 
it just has not caught on and it's not gotten the interest because we have all these other games that are there. The interesting thing also is that the United States does not seem to be nationalistic in sports. It's only been since the last Olympic when we put our best foot together in basketball. Before that, we would send anybody, college kids, would go, whereas every other country would send their outstanding players to go. And for a while, the United States was winning it. Then when we lost, and we lost to Russia, we said, well, wait a minute, this is our game. We shouldn't be losing this game. And so we don't have that nationalistic feeling when the world games are played. Our newspapers don't report it. And yet, I was in Puerto Rico, and an Argentina basketball team beat Puerto Rico, beat the United States, because we sent a little Air Force team to represent us. Big headlines, Argentina vanquishes USA. To them, it meant a big deal. To I, people around the country, it meant very little. I think that's why the Olympic Committee decided that professional athletes needed to compete in the Olympics, because we had outgrown amateur sports. And I think the Olympics will, will regain, will, it will rekindle the interest in the United States, but around the world as well. We're seeing that international basketball players are of a much finer caliber than they were 10 years ago. And in fact, in a few years, I would, I would say you could put together an all-star international team that would give an American team run for their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we see that as happening, and it's good to see that all around. Have you enjoyed what you're doing? I love what I'm doing. Yes, I do. You are now a line producer for QVC. What is a line producer? Well, I control the timing of the presentations of our show hosts, which are called presenters in the United Kingdom. And uh, I, I make sure that we get the maximum sales effort out of every product that we show to our, our customers, our viewers. So you're, you're the person behind the scenes that makes it all work while the presenters do their job before the camera. Well, I work hand in hand with the presenters and the director and about 20 other people in making sure that everything goes properly. I'm glad to have you here, and I thank you very much for it's coming a, to visit with me. It's always, it's always a, pleasure. a pleasure. Good kid, good kid. Delighted with the way he's turned out and very proud of the work that he's doing. In just a couple of minutes, you're going to meet two of the presenters from QVC United Kingdom. And you may have seen them this past couple of days at QVC in the United States. You'll meet them in just a couple of minutes.